Hello, hello. Hi. Thank you so much for your patience and, and you know, being so flexible about moving this party all the way to LinkedIn. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for also being so flexible and, and being, you know, good, good sports here. Uh, we are, this is our third live streaming uh, series episode of the Latina Force, where we're honoring the achievements of a new generation of professional women like Karina Mora, who are making history every day as we speak. By the way, Karina, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. It, it's so special to be live today. Yes, yes, I agree. I'm wearing pink in, in honor of Women's Day. I'm Sue Ladies, by the way, for those of you who don't know me. And today we have the pleasure of speaking with Karina Mora, who is a passionate educator and artist. Karina is, a dedic is dedicated to preserving the Latino heritage through art, and she firmly believes that Mexican culture and Latino culture is more than just Cinco de Mayo celebrations, margaritas, margaritas and piñatas. She's, committing, she, she's committed to showcasing the beauty, vibrancy, and humanity of Latinos and Mexicans through her art and teaching. Karina, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm ready. All right. All right. Let's start breaking the ice here a little bit as a Latina. I always ask this to any Latino or Latina that I run into my, that runs into my path. Are you ready for a rapid fire round? Yes. All right. Ta tacos or tamales? Mm, right now I'm feeling tacos. You know, it's past the holiday season. <laughs> yeah, same tacos all the way. Cafe con leche or cortadito? Uh, cafe con leche. I was just finishing up my cafecito. Nice, nice. Black beans or red beans? Mm, black beans. Empanadas or pastelitos? <gasps> mm, empanadas. I like a savory treat myself too. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about your background in fine art and, and how you get to start in your business? Yes, I am retiring from a 13-year career in wedding photography. So I'm in Chicago and I started as a wedding photographer here in Chicago. And around 2016, after building up my wedding photography business, I decided to shift. It was um, one wedding in particular where my culture was appropriated right in front of me and I had to take pictures of it and act as if nothing was wrong. And that's when I started to really question my identity and really go back and dive into my cultural roots. And so that's when I started going to Mexico and just reconnecting with my culture and taking pictures in Mexico and teaching about the history in the photographs that I was posting. So your business seeks to highlight cultural legacies uh, through art that have been forgotten through assimilation, as you mentioned. How have your clients responded to these efforts? Oh, my goodness. The conversations that have come out of this have been so needed and so rich, so deep. I think in the wedding industry, I started talking about this with a few of my Latina friends. And when I tell you, when we started having those conversations, it was like a breath of fresh air. We were able to actually talk about it. And here, our, our stories have been very similar with assimilation. And so it was really it was after those conversations that I knew that I that this work was needed, that these conversations needed to to happen. Wow, that that's so touching. Can, can you talk about any upcoming projects or initiatives that your business is working on to continue this promotion of cultural awareness and preservation? Yes. Um, so I am still in the Chicago area, and I have been growing my community. So I have a podcast, Elevating La Cultura, that I started back in 2020. And I was able to start highlighting and sharing the stories of the Latina community that I was that I was building. And that has only grown. So last year, we started hosting live networking events, and where we can just come and chismear and talk about <laughs> um, the joys of 
our businesses, the troubles in our businesses, and we can just be, we can share our stories. And so that is only growing. I have um, a space that I am building to partner with other Latina creatives and elevate their stories. I'm also leading trips to Mexico. I'm facilitating trips so that way we can come together and learn more about the Mexican culture. The We can learn about the things that were not taught to us living in the U.S. And like what, for example? Like the history. I think a lot of the time the history that we're taught in the U.S. is very one-sided. Like we only hear it from the American perspective. So true. And we we as we're adults like i am realizing that things have not been as pretty as they may have been painted to be and just realizing that land was taken uh from mexico and just this whole like diving into colonization and understanding the depth of that and how it has affected us culturally even now um so it's it's those things that are not necessarily taught in school. And it's a lot of relearning that I'm doing as an adult, but I'm doing it so that I can actually educate my children. And so that way they don't have to grow up with this identity crisis or dual identity or, or disconnect with their culture. Definitely. It's so important to hear all sides of the story. Uh, on that note, how can Latinos or anyone really, any allies who, who is watching right now be a bigger champion to highlighting that cultural legacy of Latinos or, or any other legacy uh, traditions in, in our everyday life? Yes, I think that as a society, we're, we're moving towards a more multicultural like society. We are needing to, I think it's very important to learn about different cultures, not just your own. I think I definitely have started with myself because I need to be able to understand where my historical context, my roots come from in order to then pass that on to my kids. But then also when we start doing that, that opens us up to have empathy and understanding and wanting to connect to other cultures as well. And I think that when we start doing that, we are just going to be building a more empathetic and uh, rich connections to our communities, wherever we live. I think having that conversation with yourself is the first place because it is very easy to not do anything, to just kind of blend in. But it's that intentional work of diving back into who you are culturally and wanting to preserve that cultural legacy and maybe shift things for the next generation so that they can have a positive impact on their future. That definitely hits home for me also. How, how do you, I mean, it sounds like you're doing a lot. You're, you're going to Mexico, you're doing a podcast, you have a studio. How do you manage to stay sane and, and take care of yourself amidst the demands of all that you're doing and, and with your personal life as well. I am a huge advocate for therapy because whenever you start this internal work, it brings up a lot of emotions and things that you didn't realize that you were like pushing down and not really dealing with. So I, number one is therapy. I always will advocate for people to find a therapist that they can talk to and that can like relate to them. Uh, so for me, I specifically sought out a Latina therapist. Um, and then just being able to find little pockets of joy where or rest in your day because it is draining. And a lot of times we're conditioned to think that we need to keep going. We need to work. We need to strive for more. But it's really in those moments of rest and like just being able to clear your mind that you actually attain the the cre creative uh, stamina to keep going. I agree. So finding going back to the pockets of joy, what are what are some things that give you joy? What are you passionate about? Do you have unique hobbies or interests? What what brings a smile to your face? So something that I started doing recently, probably well in 2020 was baking. I learned how to bake Mexican panecitos and Ooh, I yum. 
Yes, I I will shout out my friend Eliseo from Mexico City. He did online classes all through the pandemic. And I it is so much like it brings me so much joy to be able to make conchas fresh out of the oven, like whenever I need to. Um empanadas, I can make pastel de tres leches, like that, like baking helps me to slow down and, and sharing that with other people, like really brings me joy. Oh, you made my wife, my, my mouth water. I'm hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of food, in honor of uh, Women's History Month, if you had the chance to go to dinner and dine with an influential Latina from history, alive or dead, who would it be and why? Ooh, this question was really tricky for me. And I know that, like, I'm going to answer because this is a thing that kept coming up for me. But if I could, I would have a meal with my abuelita. She passed a few years ago. And, you know, when I was a kid, I just did not, like take advantage of really getting to know her and her story. It's only been since her passing uh, that I've heard more about her life. And so I think I really would love to have a conversation with her and just hear more about um, my past. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm sorry for your loss. Last question. Where can people find you aside from Instagram or here on LinkedIn? Yeah, so I you can find me on my website, karinamora.com, or okay. you can listen to the podcast. It's called Elevating La Cultura. It's on YouTube and wherever you find your podcasts. Elevating La Cultura. I'm going to have to sign up for that. Subscribe. Yes. All right. Well, before we wrap up, thank you, Karina, for, again, being so flexible. Instagram was being very difficult today, so we had to move it all the way to LinkedIn. Um, but it worked out in the end. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. No, thank you. It was such an honor. I'm so thankful to be here. Thank you. For those of us who are watching, I um, want to remind you that uh, to, we have another live interview scheduled for tomorrow. Up next, we have Stephanie Mungi, who will be chatting with us about her work as a body positivity advocate and, sh and how we can promote more conversations about body positivity in the Latino and Latina community, which is a very, very important subject. In the meantime, we have a Discord channel. Um, check it out. We, we have the link on every post that we post. So um, check that out. We have resources. We have connection. We have community there. So check it out. Until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. Bye, Karina. Bye.